and joining us right and joining us right after lunch. So thank you guys. I applaud you guys for joining me. <laughs> I know you guys are a little bit tired. So I'll try to be a little bit more spontaneous and, you know, outgoing so you guys could stay awake. <clears throat> so yes, this one is called, our presentation is called Become a Leader in Cross-Cultural Learning in Your Classrooms. So in the chats, I wanted to see if you guys can introduce yourselves. Um, do they have access to that? Yes. Yeah, they can share okay. in the chat um, sure, or awesome. jump on the mic, whatever you prefer. Yeah. So if you guys could, if, if, if you guys want to come on, the, uh, there's not a lot of us, so we could just come on the mic, introduce ourselves, our title, school organization, and where you guys are um, watching the Zoom from. I'm currently not watching the Zoom, just listening in because I'm driving to Fresno right now. No worries. Well, tell us who you are, Myra. Tell us a little bit about yourself so that everyone knows who you are and what, what organization you're from. If you can, safely. <laughs> yeah, I can. I can unmute myself safely. Um. I'm Myra Gallo, and I work for the Norwalk La Mirada District. Um, it's uh, in LA County. Um, and I work for the after school program with expanded learning as a site coordinator. Well, nice. we call it site leader, but you guys yes. uh, refer to it as site coordinator. Yes. Lisa, Jocelyn. Uh, my name is Jocelyn. Uh, Jocelyn Alcala. I, I work for Options for Learning. Um, we serve families all over the place uh, in LA County. Um, and I'm a site, not site supervisor, sorry. I'm an education supervisor. So I oversee a few sites with um, our school age program. Awesome. Jess? Hi, I'm Jessica Zwane. I work for Golden Valley Charter Schools in Orangeville, California, uh, nice. Northern California. Um, I am the program leader. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys so much. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't share. I'm Julie yeah. Susser with ASAP Connect. Um, we are one of the statewide partners along with California After School Network. And I'm coming to you live from a hotel meeting room in Fresno, already here <laughs> at the symposium. Um, but normally I'm based in Sacramento. So thanks. Awesome. All right, so just going over the agenda so you guys uh, understand the flow of today. Oh, we might end a little early, we might stay a little bit longer, especially because there's not a lot of us, so we could actually chit chat for a little bit longer. Um, and so we're just gonna go ahead and start with um, Mon Culture, my organization summary. Um, you guys will learn a little bit about me and how I used to work for an after school program, um, my organization's history, four steps to cross cultural learning in your classrooms lesson planning, breakout rooms where you guys can lesson plan um, with each other. And then we can learn a little bit about our my product, Mong Made Simple, so that you guys can um, learn a little bit about what that is and see if you guys would like to have that in your classrooms and then how you guys can stay connected with me. So it's super easy today. All right, so... Um, this is my organization. We started off as a um, um, a preschool program that was in person, right? And um, it was our main mission was to preserve the Hmong language and culture and bridging generations through biliteracy. And so, um, we're also a dual language program for children ages 0 to 11 and their families, and we taught them through different avenues. So throughout the years, we had to uh, improvise during the pandemic, and so we also taught online as well. And then how we work is that we train our youth, our Hmong youth, to learn the Hmong language. And then we have a team of experts that helps us to um, navigate the uh, early education field. And then we then um, get community feedback from our parents after our, uh, our lessons are done, after our sessions are done. And then we evolve our program so that it can meet the needs of our growing community. 
and this little video is just of uh, some of our first uh, classes in Merced. Oh, I miss having in person so much. <laughs> so these are some of our centers that we have them singing and learning the, the vowel sounds. All right, so let's go ahead and jump on the page. All right, so to learn a little bit more about me and my educational background and my experience, um, I actually went to school for business and with the emphasis in marketing. But as I was going to school, <clears throat> I was given an opportunity to become an after school program leader over at Chenoweth Elementary School. And so here in Merced, and so I was like, you know what, you know, I've never been in education before. I never taught before, but let's see how this goes. And so I go and I just love being with the children, love like learning with them and teaching them different things. And it was just such a great experience for me. And so as I'm going to school for business, I was like really intrigued with education as well. Also, um, I ended up working at uh, ch in childcare as well with um, preschoolers at Gateway Educate ed Educare here. So I was able to learn about early education and the different uh, needs of our of our uh, of our early educators and our our um, our preschoolers. And so that was really, really intriguing for me too to work with such young kids and just like really know how how much they can learn and absorb at such a young age. And then I have over ten years of working in the Hmong community, um, being a cultural liaison to the older and younger generation, and then also with like the the I'm sorry, the older and younger generation and then the greater community. And so like when people want to know more about the Hmong community, I have kind of like a younger lens to tell them about my experience and, and my different uh, view of what it is to be Hmong here as a second generation um, ref refugee here in the U.S. And so my notable achievements, I graduated with my business degree and um, with the emphasis in marketing. And then I was just, just last year, I got my dual language certification because I wanted to be able to be an expert in the field that, that I'm teaching, right? So if I'm teaching you guys to learn two languages, I have to be the expert in it. <laughs> and so I just got my dual language certification last year. And then um, many, many years ago um, after college, I, <laughs> I, I got my TEFL certification, which is um, the English uh, language as a uh, teaching English as a foreign language. And so I got that certification when I went overseas to teach in Thailand, um, uh, English over there. And so that's all of my notable achievements here. All right, and so here's the history of Hmong culture camp. So we started off as an in-person um, learn and play group. So I called it a learn and play group. And I just did it for, it was a very small grant and I did it for one summer and the parents and the family, they loved it. And I was like, what? Like, okay. So, and I didn't really have any like clue what I was doing, but I knew that I wanted to teach our kids. Um, I wanted to ingrain our, our language and our culture at a young age for them. And so um, I started the learn and play group. And then maybe the next year they were like, when are you gonna do it again? And so I was like, oh, do you, you guys like it? Uh, and they're like, yeah, all of our kids are not speaking Hmong anymore. They don't care about the language. They don't care about the culture. They're all losing their language. And so I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's figure something out. So I created a program. Uh, I was able to get another grant for three years with the first five. And I was able to do this three times a year. So imagine how, uh, stressful that was for me to find a location and have in-person classes with with our um, uh, with all of these students and it was for everybody it wasn't just for Hmong students but it was also our children but it was for everyone that was interested in learning in a dual language environment so learning Hmong and English um, while speaking English and so we did that for three years uh, spring summer, fall, uh, every year for three years. 
And then the last year, we actually did a school tour, which was more fun. We went into the preschools um, and we taught them what we were teaching in our classrooms. And so we went and we taught, we read in Hmong, we did Hmong dancing with them. Um, we taught them how to sing head, shoulders, knees, and toes in Hmong. And then, you know, we also taught them some cultural aspects to, to um, the Hmong culture. And so we did that in early ed and in kinder here in Merced. And then in 2020, uh, yeah, we went from a program to a nonprofit organization. So we we became our own uh, nonprofit organization. Yes. And then um, from there, we became virtual for the first time. And that was super scary because we're so used to like having the kids come. We had the parents um, doing their um, parent workshops and we had our youth, you know, full on working with our kids, but it just, it just didn't work out that way. So we, you know, me and my youth, we went to the, the drawing boards, we went back to our drawing boards, and we decided to um, do something online, but in shorter spurts. So we did a one hour session from Monday through Friday for our first session. And it was a success. They're like, that's too little. Can you do it for a month? So we decided to do it for a whole month. And the month session, like, spontaneously showed us, proved to us that it worked a lot more when they have more repetition. So that one month session really, like, geared us towards, like, what we wanted to do in the future. And so we did that again uh, 2022, uh, 2021. And then in 2021, 2022, we uh, were, were um, given an opportunity to create uh, a program, a virtual program where we can put everything that we've been doing with Mon Culture Camp onto a program that uh, we can we can provide for our teachers, our educators who is teaching Hmong or who wants to teach Hmong or who wants to teach the Hmong culture in their classrooms. We put everything into that that product. And so it's an educational product for children zero, uh, I'm sorry, from three to 11 years old. So preschool through our, um, elementary school. Okay. And so after that, in 2023, we made all of our revisions. We were able to, um, you know, bring, bring our product back to our our board and then our community members to ask them like how we can fix it to be more precise to the Hmong culture. And so that when we give it out to, um, when we present it to educators that everything that we created was is true to the Hmong culture. And so that's all what we did last year. And then this year we'll be doing outreach and you guys are one of them to the community to let you guys know about what Hmong Made Simple is and how you guys can be part of that too. All right. All right. So the four steps, if you guys have uh, paper and pen or notes, the first step to becoming a leader in cross-cultural uh, cross learning in your classrooms is one, is to do your research. In every community, you're not going to no, or what if like you're working here in Merced where it's like very diverse and then you go to like Dos Palos or something where it's all, you know, different um, ethnicities there, right? So really do your research. Wherever you're from, it's gonna be different in the little, little tiny small town next to you, right? And so I would do my research, uh, research what that community looks like. And so I have here one of the researches that I did that was really helpful. And so if you have your phone, you can put your phone out right now. You can click the QR code and then you guys can see what this actually looks like. And what it says here, this is just one of the, the graphs that is on there is, but it says that in Merced, Merced City, right? There's 24% white, 3% black, 7% um, Asian, 0% native. Let me see. And then... 63% Hispanic, right? And it also breaks it down for you, okay? So for the Hispanic, it'll break it down if it's Cuban or if it's Mexican. But for the Asian community, nothing is broken down, right? And it's such a small little speck. <laughs> <clears throat> and so I'll show you guys. 
on this one right here, this one actually, they actually what this this website right here gave me was it actually broke everything down. And then you can actually click a button on there. Um, when you actually click the button on there, it'll uh, it, that button will say like, do you want um, a full report of what the breakdown of the Asian community looks like? And then they'll actually email it to you. And so I thought that was really cool. So this one, you guys want to mark this one down, okay? All right, so I give you guys permission to take out your phones and take a picture of the QR code. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the Asian population in the city of Merced, this is 7%, okay? <laughs> so this is this is why I, I think it's so important and pertinent for you to break down the different Asian populations in your in your county because there's so many uh, ethnicities, right? And so what the what that looks like here in Merced City is there is a four thousand six hundred um, population of Hmong, which is what I am, uh, Asian Indian. So there's one thousand sixty four, Filipino seven hundred and ten, Chinese five sixteen, Korean um, is three hundred and. And to top it off, there's actually more that I couldn't fit on here. So there's like smaller little subgroups like the La Laotian community, the Mian community that's a little bit smaller, but <clears throat> I could not fit that on here. So just imagine that little tiny speck of 7% has this many different ethnicities in it. And so that's why I think it's really important for us to do our research so that we can really serve our community and help them to become confident in their identities. Oops, sorry. All right, and then you can also learn, <clears throat> I mean, it's free information, right? Learn more about your students. And so you can ask them, ask the, ask the school administrators, right? Get to know your students, ask them what their ethnicities are, you know, where their parents came from, so you can learn a little bit about them and maybe you guys can put it into geography, go into geography with them and then also communicate with your parents, ask them. Okay, how to, and so number two is creating an ambiance, right? Setting up your classroom to invite cultural expression. How does that look like? So, for Hmong culture camp, because ours was all Hmong, of course we had Hmong decorations all around. We had different ethnicities um, posters around so that the other ethnic cultures can feel comfortable being um, in our um, ambiance in our in our presence, right? We also taught my youth how to say hello in the different languages who came through our doors, and so. You can practice that, um, have different books with different diverse backgrounds. So I had African-American uh, books in here. I had uh, Hispanic, uh, a Spanish language here. Um, and I think another one, one other language so that they can see diversity and not just feel like, oh, this is just Hmong, Hmong class. So it's just all Hmong books, you know? Um, yes, okay. Okay, so I'm going to teach you guys how to say hello in Hmong. Does anybody know how to say hello in Hmong? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, so in, uh, in Hmong, we say nyo So So at Hmong Culture Camp, we use American Sign Language to teach the Hmong language too, because it's easier for kids to remember. So it's nyo so just go ahead and put your hands to your ear. Just go, nyo zhong. <laughs> you guys want to say it out loud? <laughs> I'll try, but I'll butcher it, I'm sure. <laughs> nyo zhong? Yes, nyo zhong. Nyo zhong. Nyo zhong. Yes, nyo zhong. Nyo zhong. <laughs> yes, okay. And just that simple phrase, because I had, uh, I had, um, a Spanish speakers in my class too and when they came in and I was like oh hola buenos dias like it just they're like she knows my language she knows me she got me you know so that's that's you know that's one way of them feeling like at, at home with you 
And so that's just hello. Yeah, just hello. Yeah, Jean. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to quiz you guys later. <laughs> All right. Okay. So is there any other, I'm going to, I'm going to allow you guys to look on your phones or go on Google Translate. Any other hellos that you guys can say uh, in another language? Hola. <laughs> Hola. Okay. Anyone else? I'll, I'll allow you guys to look on your Google Translate. And they have the little button for you to press speaker too. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Yes. I was going to say bonjour. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> bon dia in Portuguese. What is it? Bon dia? Bon dia. Mm -hmm. Bon dia. Okay. It's awesome. kind of like, it's the same as like buen dia in Spanish, but we just oh, okay, pronounce it differently okay, awesome. in Portuguese. Yeah, exactly. I and you so change similar. it and you change it depending on the day, like in Spanish as well. So depending on the grading in the morning versus the grading. Nice. Nice. All right. Okay. So number three is plan out your lessons, right? So we want to make sure that we're planning out our lessons with a bigger overarching theme. So I'll show you guys how that's going to look like. So in the early education field, it's called the big question. And so the big question is like the overarching theme of that month or that those couple months, right? And so these are some questions that you can use that I came up with so that um, kids can get comfortable with learning about one another. <clears throat> So who are the people in my neighborhood? This can go very far. You can you can go like police officers, you know, like the careers to my neighbor, my actual neighbors, and you know, uh, and then their ethnicities. It could be, um, it could be you know, school teachers. It could be everything. So, and then what types of food? Uh, what are the types of food we eat around the world? Right, that can open up a lot of uh, discussion, a lot of um, objectives that you can do for your lesson planning. And then what do we celebrate around the world? And a lot of kids are gonna come up with different things because their family celebrates different things. Like for us, it's gonna be Hmong New Year, right? For me and community, it's gonna be like Chinese uh, New Year where they kind of do it at the same time, right? A water festival, things like that. So you can ask them what they celebrate around the world. And then what are the ethnicities in my community, in our community? What are the celebrations in my community? So some activities that you guys can do in your classrooms to um, incorporate cultural, um, cross-cultural learning is having a cultural show and tell. I love that. They can bring something cultural from their background. It could be a Hmong doll. It could be uh, you know, uh, um, a memorabilia from their country. It could be an artifact. It can be anything. Okay. Uh, read a book about different ethnicities, cultures, traditions, or history. Uh, have a cultural potluck or a cultural show, right? That's going to be fun. I can, I can see that <laughs> being fun after school. I did a lot of things at after school program. <laughs> Um, okay, and that's me, you know, I don't want to like, um, <laughs> I don't want to um, put too much of my other youth in case they don't want to be shown on here for you guys, but this is our, um, this is me going to the different schools to teach them about the Hmong culture. This is uh, the preschool that I went to where um, I taught them about Hmong New Year, and we have a game that we play. It's ball tossing, and so we all made little balls with, like, crumpled up paper, wrapped it up for fine motor with them, and then we went outside, and we did, uh, we ball toss with them, and they, luckily, they had some Hmong teachers there. They, they gave them Hmong clothes, which is so cute, especially when it's, like, made out of paper. <laughs> um their hats and stuff like that but this one she went all out she gave them all Hmong clothes so she's you know kudos to her but I was able to go read in Hmong to them um 
um, right here is just one of the classrooms. And this one is where we taught them about the story cloth. So the Hmong people, we have a big story cloth that keeps our, um, that we make and we sew to keep some of our folklore or our traditions or how we came to the United States, it's all sewn on there. And so uh, we taught the kids about that and then they were able to make their own uh, story cloth down here in this um, um, right corner here. And of course I taught the Hmong dance too. <laughs> um, okay. And so the number four is include parents in your lessons. So this is gonna be very important for you guys because parents, they are going to be the guiding factor in how um, their, their kids learn about their own culture and about their own, um, about their own um, cultural backgrounds. And so how, include parents in your lessons. Ask parents to be part of the lessons. They can sit in as a cult, uh, human library, right? So how, what's a human library? Have you guys heard of that before? <laughs> I have so not. Can, that sounds cool. Yeah. Okay. So a person from that history, that cultural history. So if you're learning about the Hmong people, you can have their grandparents or their parents come in and talk about their refugee um, um, experience coming here to the United States, right? So they can learn from an actual human, their, their actual library. You know, they're, they're speaking about their truth, about their travels to the United States. And then they can tell the kids about what it was that took them here. And so you can have uh, human libraries where you can have, um, you know, you could talk about um, uh, either the cultural background, some traditions that they have, right? It doesn't have to be just about their, their refuge here to the US, but it could be about like what they did in their country, uh, games they played in their country, things like that, that will spark the interest of kids. A for potluck, have students inter interview their parents and grandparents. I did that with Hmong Culture Camp. Um, I asked them to ask their grandparents what kind of games they played when they were kids. <laughs> and that was like one of the best answers that they got when they came home. And it could be something easy because I know after school, they're like, oh, I'm tired. They're at school all day and then they come back. But if it's something that they asked like that was simple, like what kind of games did you play when you were a kid? Um, you know, they're going to remember that all day and they won't be able to hold it in before after school program. Busavan, I'm not sure if you saw in the chat, you have a great question. Do you have a oh. closer photo of the story cloth and is it similar to a quilt? And that comes from Lisa. Yeah, um, I do. I'm sorry. Um, I do have a story cloth. Where's my story cloth at? Um, I do have, I do have one. Maybe I'll send Maybe I'll send it to you guys. I'll you can it upload it into the um, app for the resources to share after too. Okay, okay. I'll do that for you guys. Thank you so much. Let me see. Great question. And the human library term, I think you should add that. That's so great, Osaman. Oh, say that again? The human library term is great. Oh, thank you. Okay. And I'm sorry, you also got a great comment from Whitney. She's loving all these ideas. She's excited to celebrate all the different cultures they have in their school. So I just want to make sure to elevate the chat as well for people that are engaging that way. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Julie. <laughs> all right. Okay, so if you guys want to take a picture of this or you guys want to write this down, this is our lesson planning template for early education. <laughs> so um, we always have a big question, right? The big question or theme, an overarching theme. Um, this is one of my favorites that I did at Hmong Culture Camp. Uh, it was a camping theme. And then all of our learning ob objectives were um, in uh, about camping. So it was like, um, all of our vocabulary was like um, about like animals in the woods and uh, tents and things like that. And so I thought that was really fun. Um, and then that was how we were able to like translate like some of the stuff in Hmong and so the kids could learn in Hmong in a fun, happy way. So uh, there's vocabulary. So we'll be breaking out soon to, to do our own uh, lesson planning. So um, go ahead and write this down or take a picture of it and then and then we'll we'll all kind of help 
do one or two together since there's not a lot of us. Um, what kind of games do you want to play with them? What do you want? So I did, you know, ball tossing right at, at the schools. Um, but then you can also you can um, I, we also did like accounting games to teach them how to count in mall. Right. Um, we also did um, so for toys, you know, I would buy toys that was like um, like for the theme. I know you guys don't, you know. Ha well, you guys do have a big budget with after school programs, so who knows? Maybe you guys could do like a whole theme and and plan out at the at the end of the uh, the beginning of the year, and then plan out every month, and then maybe you guys can you know purchase your toys for that month. So you could buy toys for that month, like blocks, building blocks, or you can buy like toys for them to play with. Um, I know this is for early ed, <laughs> so I don't know, but games for sure for the older kids. And then you guys can give them, you know, for story time or literacy, um, it's going to be, you know, you can teach them different books, stories or folklores in different cultures, right? So the, the Hmong culture, we have different folklores. Um, and then arts and crafts, science and discovery. So, you know, for, for preschoolers, discovery is like, you know, you could just take them outside and look at the leaves, you know, little things like that or... Um, have them take some bark and like color it with a, you know, with a coloring thing, things like that is just still discovery or science for them. Um, dramatic play. So what I always did was I always had extra Hmong clothes for the kids to put on during Hmong uh, for, um, for their uh, free play. So I give them Hmong clothes, like fairies, whatever they want to be. I know I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm like, an after school program, if they're still doing dramatic play, but it could be okay because you know what, like it's their time to, to be free, you know, after school. So if you guys ever want to do dramatic play or anything like that, you know, they love, uh, they love pretending to be a chef. They love pretending to be a, a, a butterfly, <laughs> things like that. And then planning a small group. Cause you know, when you're doing big group, like you know, they're, they're kind of trying to listen, but they're, you know, but smaller groups is when they're going to give you the undivided attention. And so think of how you want to plan the small groups um, when they're talking to each other. That's when they're going to learn the best, when they're talking to each other and they're learning from each other. All right. So it's time for breakout session. Um, okay. I'll be dropping us into breakouts. And I think you're going to give us uh, 10 minutes. Is that right? Yeah, 10 minutes. Oh, we lost some people when you said breakouts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did put a snapshot up, and it could be poor connection. Let's assume the best, okay. not the worst. Um, but uh, we have about, I think, three people in each room. Okay. And um, I took a screenshot of your slide that, that gave the framing for the template for awesome. early learners. Okay. It would help people. Uh -huh. And I guess we can go ahead and open them now, Busavon, unless you have any other instructions. Nope, nope, that's it. <laughs> okay, so just to recap, they're going to be in groups of three for uh -huh. 10 minutes. And the challenge is to create, create a lesson, lesson plan. Ideas. And then, yeah, create a lesson plan together. And then you can present it to us after you're done. Yeah. Okay, cool. And everyone, just again, for reference, it's in the chat. When So when you go leave the room, you'll still have access to the chat. Enjoy your breakthrough groups. We'll see you in 10. All right, so everyone's been invited to join a group. I'm going to pause the recording, Busavan, because okay. recording again. Room one, room two. I'm just making sure I got everyone. Room three was Jocelyn, Lisa, and Myra. And I think that's it. Okay, okay. back to you. All right, so let's go ahead and share out the lessons that you guys created together. So, I mean, we could just go in order. We could just go with room one with Allie and Whitney. Sure, yeah. Um, I work at uh, Professor Egghead Science Academy. So it, we do science after school enrichment. And I was like, this is a, a bit of a challenge and how to incorporate like culture into science when the kids are so young to kind of, you know, I, when they get older, we can say things in different languages and kind of refer to different things. But some of the lessons that we have that I was thinking are appropriate for the young, really young kids, because um, mm -hmm. primarily we work with K and up, but okay. we do have one that's like 
a balloon car. So they just have like a little carton and then they put on like little wheels and then we like teach them the propulsion with the little balloon at the end. And perhaps mm -hmm. we could also like teach them how to say car in a different language, or maybe they can, Whitney had a great idea of like decorating the car in different like things that, you know, remind you of your culture, things like that. Just yeah. a way to keep it kind of simple without like putting too much on them and they're already learning science so young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Whitney, did you have anything to add in room one? Um, no, I think that was most of it. Okay. Just kind of making it simple for everyone still. And, um, you know, I think sometimes the more simple it is, the more they learn. And then, the yes. Yes, so true. Hey guys, sorry, I had to go home to run some medicine. So I'm in my car. So I just quit. Um, I think I stayed logged in on the computer, but then I just logged in on the Zoom as why well. I shouldn't be in a breakout session until I get back to work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, room two. Uh, we have Bill, Jason, or Rowinder. Did you guys want to share out? Uh, Jason, you have anything you want to share? We we actually <laughs> didn't create a lesson plan, but we talked a lot about lesson plans and using the strategies you described. Yes. Okay. And okay, how let's... to and how to use them. For instance. Okay. So let's I, let's hear them. So I would say some of the things you have here are the vehicles from which to provide right those activities, like your games and toys, mm -hmm. your dramatic plays, books yes. and arts and crafts. Um, that that that's the vehicle you can use so that young people can. I, especially if somebody's trying to assimilate in, into the country, right? And yeah. the language acquisition. Yes. Typically during the school day, students have less than 30 seconds to be able to speak. How the <laughs> heck they're supposed to get language acquisition if they only allow them to talk 30 seconds a day? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, they have no time to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in the expanded learning program, we have a great opportunity to be able to do that. And I think um, folks find it, young folks find it a very safe place to be and they get a chance for those um, you know, in, informal conversations where they're able to build language and they're able to express themselves and they're able to share with others. So as we talked about knowing that, how do we then apply intentionality to what we're doing in these activities yes. so that we're infusing the vocabulary, we're infusing the other things from the culture, right, that may be there or give them an opportunity to share in that informal space so that they're yes. able to, um, you know what I mean? They're able to, to do better, yeah. be able to learn things um, in a in a much less pressure situation, right? Yeah. Nobody's calling on them and they're feeling all picked on. They can actually sit there and have conversations <laughs> with folks. So. I think I think um, our our after school programs provide a great opportunity for folks from other cultures to be able to share and 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 learn, right? Yes. Different cultures. So that's that's kind of what we talked about in in looking at lesson planning. Awesome. Did anybody from room two want to share also? Jason or Rowinder? Rajwinder. That's good. I, I joined late, so I just caught the very end of the conversation. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jason? I think Jason put in the chat that he's unable to mute. Oh, okay. So I don't know if you want to move on to room three. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and go to room three. Jocelyn, Lisa, and Myra. Um. Okay, our group, we were able to briefly um, go over a lesson plan. We struggled with a couple things, but um, mm -hmm. we'll get into that. We decided to do, um, our objective would be to introduce and explore Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year. Mm -hmm. um, we were torn about the vocabulary we would use. Mm -hmm. um, it can lunar. be English. It can be English vocabulary. It doesn't have to be in their language. It could just be... Um, it could be um, Lunar New Year. It could be, you know, red envelopes, right? It could be whatever, dragon, right? Things like that, that, well, they can learn new new cultural, like, um, vocabulary that they didn't really know about before, yeah. Okay. We we did talk about that, but we were like, oh, it's it's a lot, you know? It's a lot of um, information. Yeah. Um, so, um, so we did uh, mention those things. Um, 
going on to what was it games and um, toys uh -huh. we thought about um we could do for finger play we could do five green dragons uh -huh. um for a game we could put uh we we thought about doing set up house uh -huh. um it's where you know for the in the dramatic play area since you know cleaning and prepping the house before the chinese new year is a tradition and yeah. they have to sweep and right clean out all the bad luck uh -huh. set up the tra dramatic play area as a housekeeping center and provide them yeah. with you know, baby wipes and all those Ooh, I like that. Uh, mm -hmm. type rooms and all of that um moving forward um arts and crafts we thought make a red envelope a lycee is that i don't know if you pronounce that correctly Ly lycee lacy uh, a red envelope mm -hmm. or the chinese flag um yes. or doing texture painting yes. there's a lot to choose from i i feel like um, when you're talking about Lunar New Year, mm -hmm. uh, books, Sam and the Lucky Money, um, or even starting the lesson when you talk about Chinese New Year, starting it with a book in, in circle time, um, mm -hmm. like with the book Celebrating Chinese New Year by Diane Hoyt Goldstein. Um, I think that would be a good way to introduce the lesson. Mm -hmm. And then moving forward, science. That one was a little tough. We thought about, uh, my colleague said, researching firecrackers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or having them, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or talking Why about fire safety. <laughs> yeah, and then they can go out there and throw those little poppers, right? <laughs> so, uh, That's going to be fun. That's going to be yeah. a fun Chinese New Year for you guys. Okay. And then small group animal actions, showing animals from the Zodiac and having them act like those animals. Another yes. uh -huh. activity would be one large dragon and breaking it up into sections. Like the teacher could do the head of the dragon, you know, all the way down to its tail. So, I love that. yes. So those are that. our ideas. I don't okay. know if I missed anything. Does anybody want to add in from room three? No, I think Linda shared all of our ideas perfectly. Thank you. Okay, or at least that, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay. All hey, right. Savan, um, Jason actually can share now. He just put in the chat that his um, un unmute now works. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Jason. Okay. Okay. Hello. I just wanted to share what I was uh, talking with Bill in the breakout room. Mm -hmm. I shared with them that at my boys and girls club, there was a member right now that we have that only speaks Korean and um, his parents wanted them, him to be exposed to the uh, more English language. So mm -hmm. um, it's at times a little challenging for my staff that I supervise that they, they have to help his name's uh, Kevin, but yeah. Um, with the help of other students that do speak Korean and just are kind. Are I think... kind sorry about that. No, no, go ahead. But uh, just with our other um, students, it just gets to see that uh, mixture of culture and language and vocabulary words and like games and toys, like playing Jenga. And mm -hmm. Kevin gets to understand playing with other members just through like play playing with them uh -huh. that he gets it's, it's uh, immersed in the cultural um just mixture of uh learning english at through playing with jenga with the other members that do not know korean so that's just something i learned from bill right now and i was like wow okay if that was correctly speaking yeah i honestly um, what I did when I worked um, at the elementary school was there was a lot of migrant um, children, migrant workers, children that came to our school. I was I was the I was the person that um, immersed them into um, English learning, and um, because a lot of the the kids at at the school they didn't. They didn't speak a lick of English, and so it was it was difficult for them to to know. But I was like, well, I'm the I'm their teacher. I should learn their language too, you know. So I did learn how to say, um, raise your hand, you know, sit oh, okay. down, uh, uh huh, uh, little words here and there because that's gonna help them kind of like fully 
get to where they need to be too, because they're not going to, you know, so, so I think, I think it's, it's fair to meet them uh, where they are too. So just learn maybe like a few words that can help them too. Lisa, okay. I, I wanted to also share it, just a resource if that's okay. Okay. Um, Duolingo is free uh -huh. and it's actually um, some students that I worked with were using it to learn mm -hmm. another language nice. and then it's a free app and you can download it and it will actually Jason it kind of gamifies the lesson learning around language mm. and you can learn like they have I don't know probably more than 100 languages on there nice. and even different dialects is interesting and so I think what's helpful Jason is even if you downloaded the app and use it as like a gamified kind of opportunity it might also encourage other students that don't speak Korean to learn Korean to talk with that student as well and your staff. So just a creative idea. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. I'll drop it in the chat. Yes, I like that. Thank you, Julie. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and... Learn more about Mome Simple. So after all those years teaching Mong to Hi, couple ball hi Lu Mong. Oh, it started. Hi, couple ball hi Lu Mong. With each generation that passes, the Hmong risk the chance of losing their language and cultural identity. According to the 2020 U.S. Census, the Hmong American population is among the youngest of all groups in the United States, with the majority being under 30 years old, born after 1980, and most part Hmong are under 10 years old. With fewer children learning how to speak Hmong and little recognition in the history books, it makes us question how long the Hmong language and heritage will live on. To address this issue, Hmong Culture Camp has created a virtual program called Hmong Made Simple. Hmong Made Simple provides fun and simple learning lessons for Hmong and non-Hmong educators to utilize in classrooms. It teaches educators and students how to be culturally inclusive and accepting of all backgrounds. Hmong Made Simple will be accessible to all educators and students and our launch date is set for August 2023. Hmong Made Simple offers six unique units ranging from children's songs, culture, Hmong games, common phrases, reading and storytelling, and arts and dance. These lessons were co-created with Hmong youth. The curriculum gives educators and students the opportunity to learn both green and white Hmong dialects. During storytelling sessions, stories can be read in English and Hmong. There are over 60 lessons and bonus materials with resources that will be added year-round. To reach our goal of reaching many and teaching students about the Hmong language and culture, we need help from our community members. We are currently searching for beta testers who are willing to test out Hmong Made Simple and give us feedback. Beta testers will receive a discounted rate for our program. We would love to connect to administrators from around the world who are interested in our program. If you are an administrator or know of one, please ask them to reach out to us. And lastly, we need help from our friends and family from Hmong Culture Camp to advocate for Hmong Made Simple at your children's school. If you have any questions, please reach out to Hmong Culture Camp's founder, Bua Savan Lor, at hmongculturecamp at gmail.com, visit our Hmong Made Simple website, at mongmadesimple.com or connect with us on Facebook at Mong Culture Camps. Thank you for listening and we hope to see you soon. Shinji Dua. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that hiccup. <laughs> I just had a mind of its own. Okay. And so what Mong Made Simple is, is it's a yearly subscription product that early educators, elementary school teachers, after school programs, and Hmong and cultural and language programs. And we just added parents too, if parents want to actually have a hold of this, because I think it's so um, important for our kids to continue to learn and um, learn the Hmong language and culture. And you can use this program to teach your students about the Hmong culture and the language. And so I do have a portion about our history 
and um, a lot of um, teacher prepping um, about the Hmong people. And then the learning units are simple for teachers to understand and intriguing for students of all backgrounds to follow along. So we have, um, we actually have lesson plans um, along with uh, worksheets that they can do in their classrooms uh, along with a video. And we have over 60 videos. And then our intended, intended audience is um, teachers who teach children ages three to 11 years old. So preschool to elementary school kids. And again, just to reiterate our um, curriculum, we have common phrases in Hmong, and it's going to be in the white and the green dialect. Um, <clears throat> um, we teach about the Hmong culture, so about Hmong, like the Hmong New Year, um, Hmong uh, shamanism. And then we, uh, we have storytelling and reading. So we'll have some stories that are in Hmong, and then some stories will be in English as well um, for our folklore. Um, so we have three folklore in there, in Hmong and in English, and then we'll have arts and dance. So if they want to learn how to Hmong dance or do some arts and crafts, we have um, simple steps for the kids to do. You could just play the video and the kids can follow along to do the Hmong dance. And then we have arts and crafts. We also have children's songs that are completely in Hmong. And then we have um, that we translated from English to Hmong. And then we have Hmong games that you can play with your kids so that they can continue, you know, to pass down our Hmong games into, uh, you know, future generations with or without their parents' uh, knowledge. So it could be from school. Sorry about that. And then we do have bonus resources um, that I created, uh, which is um, which is um, extra worksheets or what is it? Um, it's like uh, flashcards that you can download. And so you can do that with the kids. Um, and then also you have the opportunity to work with me as your consultant to go through the product with you. Um, if you don't understand, because I know the Hmong culture is, you know, sometimes people have no idea about the Hmong culture. And so you have me to guide you and, um, you know, you can add consultations to your schools, uh, your after school programs. Um, and so luckily for, for after school programs um, and nonprofits, um, you guys can add, you guys can add consultation to your, uh, to the product. And then I'll be able to help you guys monthly with any questions that you guys have and uh, a 24 hour chat box too. This is how you guys can stay in touch with me. Um, you guys, if you guys want to purchase Mong Made Simple, it's at mongmadesimple.com. Um, and then um, this is my um, Gmail right here for Mong Culture Camp. And then we have a Facebook page, Mong Culture Camps. And then I also teach Mong on TikTok. <laughs> if you guys want to follow me on TikTok, I'm at Mong Made Simple all over there. And then I have little short videos that you guys can follow along um, at, on TikTok. And then last but not least, I'm going to teach you guys how to say thank you in Hmong. So um, in Hmong, thank you is wa cho. Wa cho. <laughs> Watch out. Yeah, so um, if you guys can come off a of mute, I want to hear you guys say that before I go. Watch out. Watch out. Good job. Watch out. Watch out. Okay, anybody remember how to say hello? <laughs> Hello is Yajong. And then thank you is Wacho. So just think of like Achu. Wacho. 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 Thank you guys. So that is the end. I can send you guys all of that information um later on in the resource box and so i'll be sending that over to julie um did you guys have any yeah for this me? one um you can upload that directly into the app um okay. for okay. your session okay. and um all everyone on the call you'll be able to download the app and access all the materials for the session but 
wanted to just make sure, did anyone have any questions for Bosamon while she's here? And Bosamon, will you be here at the actual in-person in Fresno? Will you be attending or? No, I will not be. But um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me at moanculturecamp uh, at gmail.com. And then I'll drop guys... it in the chat, um, yes. I, have I think. Go ahead. I have a question. Mm -hmm. do, you know, do you find um have a scenario where there might be some it's really hard to hear her. I think she was um she's breaking out, huh? Yeah. So maybe when she comes back, if it's still bad, we can do it in the chat. Okay, okay wait. It's Hmong culture camps or camp. Camp. At Gmail. Camp. At Gmail. At Gmail. So double check that I'm right before everybody uses this. Oh, yeah. This yeah okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we are actually going to still have a closing plenary. Um, we'll have a break from 1.30 to 1.45. It is a little bit early right now. Um, and we will be having the closing plenary from 1.35 to 1.55. So don't forget um, that you'll be coming back for the closing. And also, if you signed up for a virtual site visit later this afternoon, um, they'll be going on this afternoon as well. But you had to, I believe, sign up in advance for that. So um, you will know if you're already part of that. Um, Sherilyn, you're back. And I was just sharing that the closing plenary will be 1.35 to 1.55 or 2 o'clock-ish. And that will be the main um, Zoom link, um, the main room link that you joined for this morning. But sure, oh, we lost her. Thank you. Oh, no, no, no I'm back. still here. I'm she still here. Thank okay, you. Go. Does she have, does she still want to say something? She's she back. Has... Yeah, she wants okay. to ask my, a question, I think. My question, yeah, I can't believe I could get disconnected right when I'm asking a question. My question <laughs> is, if, like, I have students, um, there's not a single mom speaker at my school. We have mostly English and Spanish and then a little tiny bit of Mandarin. Oh. I would assume kids that already, you know, that don't have a Hmong background, they'd still be interested in learning, right? Kids yeah. just like learn any random language that, you know, yes, they don't I think connect so with, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just figuring what you thought about that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Is that something, like, if we did contract with you, that's like, I'm not anywhere near you, that could be something we could do via Zoom? Yeah, it would be, everything would be through Zoom, yeah. So, so, um, this product is is usable um, via um, membership. So you would just get the membership and then um, the monthly consultations would just be through the school. Like you guys can find a day where you, we can meet with you monthly uh, if you guys have any questions and then just go from there. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm, no problem. All right. Unless you have any other questions, um, we'll see you back at the closing plenary yet. 135. Thank you, Bosavon, Thank you, for your everyone. expertise and sharing all the resources. It's so great. Yes, yes. Thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you on the closing. Bye-bye.